Hi, I'm Simon Phoenix from the Physics Department. Welcome. So you have to choose a major. Well, obviously there's a whole load of information you're going to need to know before making that choice. Things like course requirements, course structure. Uh, all those things are going to be covered uh, at a later session, during the question sessions with faculty. But today, I want to focus on the most important question of all. Why? Why choose physics? Let's think about our planet for a moment. Our planet sits in the Milky Way galaxy, quite a way out from the centre on one of the spiral arms. The nearest star to our sun is Proxima Centauri, and that's a whopping 40 trillion kilometres away. Light is the fastest thing there is, and that travels about 300,000 kilometres in just one second. It takes light from Proxima Centauri about four and a quarter years to get to us here on Earth. You think that's a long time? Light from the centre of our galaxy takes over 26,000 years to get here. We're seeing light that began its journey before humans could tie their shoelaces or even knew what shoes were. These are big numbers. Our universe is a very, very big place. Our galaxy alone contains at least 100 billion stars. There are thought to be two trillion galaxies, each containing billions of stars. And that's just in the universe we can actually see. The nearest big galaxy to ours is the Andromeda galaxy. And it takes light from there two and a half million years to get to us. It's really hard to imagine these kinds of numbers. And yet everything we can see out there unimaginable distances away. It's made up of exactly the same stuff we and the Earth is made of. Hmm, okay. That's all very nice, but how do we know that? And the answer is light. The thing that happens when you turn on a light, or rather a lamp, I should say. Now, every element on Earth has a kind of fingerprint made of light. When an atom radiates energy, that energy gets released as a specific set of wavelengths of light. And it looks a bit like a barcode. So when light from a galaxy reaches us, we can look for these fingerprints, these barcodes, and we see exactly the same barcodes we have on Earth. That's how we know everything we can see out there in the universe is made of the same stuff that's all around us on Earth. Hmm, okay, but how do we know about these barcodes? Well, we know that by going in the other direction and looking at the very small, the world of atoms. So imagine a box, about one meter on each side. There are about the same number of air molecules in that box as there are stars in the entire observable universe. That's how small atoms are. And yet by studying the very small, these atoms, and knowing about how they radiate light, we can connect this to the very big, the observable universe. That's the power of physics. This is the power you will have if you choose to study physics at KU. But, you know, physics doesn't deal with the grand ideas alone. It drives almost every technological advance you can think of. So today we're developing surfaces that can clean themselves. New and more efficient solar cells like the photovoltaic array at Mazda, all driven by physics. The UAE has launched the Hope Probe as part of the Mars mission. It will provide the very first complete picture of the Martian atmosphere and it'll be essential to the success of the Mars mission. We're developing quantum computers, harnessing the quantum properties of atoms directly that can run at speeds many, many millions of times faster than today's fastest processors. Ordinary computers work by manipulating ones and zeros, like little switches, operated really fast. In quantum mechanics, however, we can put atoms in a kind of superposition of one and zero, or on and off. 
It's a bit like them being on and off at the same time. When we code something as a set of ones and zeros in an ordinary computer, it's a definite pattern. But using the quantum superposition properties of things like atoms, it's sort of like being able to code for all patterns at once. And it's this that gives quantum computing its power. But it's not easy to do, and it'll be a while yet before your phone is running as a quantum computer. Sounds like physics has everything beautifully worked out, doesn't it? Well, far from it. The same physics that allows us to connect the very small atoms and the universe, the very big, is also causing us problems. We don't know how to fix those problems yet. Einstein's theory of gravity and the theory of quantum mechanics, both supported by massive amounts of evidence. Well, they just don't work very well together. It's a problem physicists have been struggling with for decades. It really does look like we need the next Newton or Einstein. Could that be you? If what I've said gives you just a little tingle or the feeling that you want to find out more, then maybe physics is the choice for you. You'll find out about all of this stuff and so much more in a physics major. And it's not just about technology. The skills you will acquire learning physics are in high demand in all sorts of places. I know someone who did a PhD in quantum computing. He's now working, applying his skills to help manage some of the investment portfolios for the UAE government. Of course, we do have to learn to walk before we can run. And so there's some work we have to do before we get to the really exciting stuff. We have to learn how golf balls move before we can understand the orbits of planets or satellites. We have to learn how electricity and magnetism work before we can understand the properties of atoms and just why they have this barcode made of light. The KU Physics course will take you on that journey from the very basics to the greatest ideas and mysteries that are challenging us today. Thank you very much.